What is going on you guys? Lindy Genzone is back again today for another video and we are going to continue my mock draft series here with the, you guessed it, the Devontae Smith edition mock draft for 2021. Um, in this case, I went with Devontae Smith just because of how the how the chips fell. Um, I will try and do a <laughs> Jamar Chase mock um, the next time I put one up here. Um, he was he was not available when I did this mock. I think he ended up going. Um, he went in the top five. The Dolphins took him with their pick, so he was gone right away. And so the next guy, since um, a lot of us Eagles fans are are just in debate with this whole thing and and you know Devontae Smith is kind of in the background right now because the whole the the whole debate's been between Kyle Pitts and uh, Jamar Chase but with those rumors out there um, with Jalen Hurts and Devontae Smith talking to each other and you know word has it they had conversations about Devontae playing for the Eagles so um, I thought I'd make a mock um, with him as our number six. And uh, let's get into it. So obviously with the sixth pick, I have the Eagles taking Devontae Smith, the Heisman winner from Alabama. Uh, not much more <laughs> needed to be said about him. Um, at 37 in the second round, you know, with the projections, uh, you know, this guy is a top three tight end in the draft, and it's still crazy to me how in um, some test mocks that I have done that he still drops to um, 37 after Kyle Pitts. And because obviously Pitts was not the selection here for us, um, I, wanted to, I wanted to grab a tight end. And um, <laughs> I am, and I'm excited about this one because I, I do think there's cases where he's very, um, where he's very underrated as far as um, this tight end class of the draft. And with the 37th pick, I have the Eagles taking Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State, the tight end that they call Baby Gronk over there. Dudes, dudes got such. He's he's got such an an intimidating, you know, stature to him. Comes in about six five six six, you know, two fifty five, two hundred sixty pounds. Um, his twenty twenty season was shortened by a um, season ending injury. Unfortunately, the quarterback play was up and down. Um, you know, during his time on the field, and even through. All of that, and it still amazes me because he probably would have made this a, a lot higher. Um, he still um, broke the uh, record for career um, career touchdown career touchdown receptions um, by a tight end for Penn State, and I think he uh, passed Mike Isecki, Um Pat Frymuth recorded 16 career total touchdowns to Mike's 15. And he's 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 such an awesome player to uh, he's such an awesome player to watch. Um, he reminds me a little bit of a combination between two of our tight ends now and Zach Ertz and Dallas Goddard. Um, fantastic route runner. He he's really good with his out routes. He knows he knows where to sit and find the soft spots um, in zone defense. Um, <laughs> he's he's great up the seam. He doesn't have that. He doesn't have that breakaway speed per se. Um, in my opinion, on tape, Dallas Goddard looks faster. But if you combine if you combine Pat and Dallas and put them on the 
field at the same time. It's, I, I really think that would be a deadly duo together in due time. And, you know, this is all barring the all this talk about what's going to happen with Zach Ertz. But at 37, I couldn't pass him up. He was still available. Pat Fryermuth out of Penn State. We're going we're gonna to snag him. Um, the 70th is um, – now, I picked him in the first mock with Kyle Pitts. There's um, two picks here, um, the last pick in this mock, and then um, this one, um, Tommy Togi, I ended up being the same. I was comfortable with both players. So being that they were available, I still I still took them. Um, I kept this mock under the same format as the first one, being I wanted to utilize all 11 picks and you know just really bring in another you know another fresh group of guys to kind of you know fill up our depth and see um what um you know who Sirianni can work with give him some extra bodies um the 84th I ended up taking Spencer Brown a tackle out of northern Iowa and uh <laughs> the the reason I took him is is I like that he um resembles the size of Jordan Mailata they both come in at about six eight six nine um spencer um spencer weighs less than jordan he comes in at about 315 a lot of people are saying jordan my lot of weighs around the 380 to 390 mark so um you know when you're when you're when you're talking about that just just the thought of having two you know just the thought of having two big tackles on the field like that be be uh be a crazy sight to see and again you know, this this comes down to the fact that you know we got our we got our all, all pro offensive linemen still on the roster and Lane Johnson and um, Brandon Brooks. Um, you know, barring any sort of trades for that matter, which I I don't really think that's going to happen. You know, for the amount of time that Brandon Brooks has devoted into wanting to come back to play to this for this football team through two straight Achilles injuries and. You know the the determination that he has, even battling through um, his anxiety issues, is remarkable. And um, I'm glad that we still have Brandon Brooks, even though the you know the injuries just can the injuries have piled up as of late. And you know it, it is what it is. But I'm I'm hoping that you know he comes back to form. And then you know with Lane Johnson's description of his ankle, you know collapsing. So um yeah again with the combination of those guys one of the best in the business um and coach Stalin um you know it it does I only I don't even I I could be you know I, I could be comfortable with taking almost any lineman because of the pedigree that you know those guys have and um but it's just going to depend on um you know what how we work the depth that we do um, got right now. At 150, I have the Eagles taking a uh, quarterback out of Michigan, Ambry Thomas. Um, he did opt out of the 2020 season due to COVID, um, but he ended up being like a four or five star recruit. And he showed some really good um, tape in 2019 comes in at, um, comes in at six foot 195. Um, he's kind of the, Stand, he's kind of the standard size. I would, I think he, I, I would say like standard size for a corner. Um, I do believe he can play outside. So I, I think, um, I think he kind of fits the definition of a diamond in the rough sort of um, prospect to take in the later rounds. So, you know, maybe that could happen with this kind of pick. Um, at 156, I have the Eagles taking a edge out of the Ohio State and and Jonathan Cooper. He kind of um, he kind of resembles the size of Brandon Graham. He would be um, <coughs> excuse me. He would he would end up being kind of a rotational piece as he's projected out to be. Um, can't really can't really go along in that matter with the um, you know the situation that we have right now as we know with Derek Barnett and. And uh, Josh Sweat, you know, uh, doesn't look like we're signing back Vinnie Curry. So we're kind of hurting 
we're kind of hurting at um, the edge spot. And like I said in the previous mock with Jannard Avery moving to linebacker, which seems a little more natural to him. So, um, yeah, got our got ourselves a rotational, uh, developmental, rotational piece in the future if we decide to hold on to him. At 189 is our is our guard spot in um, Robert Jones out of Middle Tennessee, another developmental piece. At 224 is going to be our quarterback, prototypical quarterback of Kyle Rosman and Jeffrey Lurie. Uh, Felipe Franks out of Arkansas comes in at about um, 6'5". I think he's like 6'5", 217 or um, like he's under, he's either under 220 or over 220. Uh, I can actually make a quick check right here. Actually, no, I can't. Never mind. (laughs) <laughs> I was at the I was at the end of the mock. I couldn't see their measurables, but again, you know, um, he's another developmental quarterback that has a, a unique. He has somewhat of a unique skill set where he can uh, where he can be put in um, in some uh, option run packages for you know for himself just to just to carry the ball. Um, he's he's pretty much average in everything else. So, um, you know, he could be, uh, you know, that camp arm. He could be that camp arm or a uh, uh, a number three in the rotation of quarterbacks. At 225, our developmental linebacker and Caleb Kelly. Um, nothing, nothing too much to, nothing too much to say about him here. Um, he can do a little bit of everything. Doesn't excel at one thing. So, um, when it, yeah, with, with these picks, with these picks, they're, you know, mostly practice squad guys, camp guys, you know, all the, all the developmental is coming towards the bottom here. And then um, for 234 and 240, um, you know, 240 is a repeat from the first mock. Rakeem Boyd out of Arkansas. Um, um, linear downhill, downhill runner, um, a little bit undersized, I guess for it, he comes in, you know, built like Corey Clement, but if he can put on a little bit of girth, it would help him with his, um, you know, with his, um, pinball effect and allowing defenders to bounce off of him. But, um, you know, add more, add at least one more depth piece to the running back room that we still have to figure out who we actually have. And then at 234, um, Brady Breeze, a safety out of Oregon. Um, another another developmental guy. Uh, he comes in at he comes in at about six foot, two oh five, that sort of thing. Um, <clears throat> uh, excuse me, and what what I like what I liked um, in the notes about him is he he showed, he showed a bit of a, he showed a bit of a leadership. He showed a bit of a leadership role. Um, it, again, this is another player that can do um, a little bit of everything pretty well. Um, that's gonna, that's gonna be about it for this mock. Um, I kind of like the way that this one turned out. You know, especially the fact that. Um, the difference here is we don't end up getting the linebacker in the second round, but more so we kind of take the route that we um, did in 2018 with with Dallas Goddard. Only um, we're going to get Pat this time, so we get we get to have um, two um, two difference maker weapons here in Devonte and Fryermuth as a combination as opposed to in the um as opposed to in the first mock where it's just Kyle Pitts. Um yeah. So that's a that's gonna about do it for this mock. This has been the Devontae Smith edition for the twenty twenty one draft of the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me know down in the comments how this one compares to the Kyle Pitts mock, which one you would prefer. Um if you guys would like to see another mock 
maybe a Jamar Chase edition, Jalen Waddle, whatever it is. We I could go quarterback. I could go quarterback. I could go defense. Just yeah, let me know down in the comments. Reach out to me. Um, yeah, feed, feedback. Uh, feedback's definitely helpful in this aspect. But I appreciate you guys once again coming over to my channel, seeing seeing what I am giving you guys. And uh, this has been Lindy Endzone, and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Take care.